Hi everyone and welcome to Football Therapist, my channel. Today and as promised, uh, I will present you I will present you uh, four young promising players of the, the Ecuadorian national team. But before I start, uh, I'd like to invite you to see my last video on why Independiente del Valle's academy is so successful at producing young players like these four. They are indeed the best proof uh, of this success, even if I can't predict, uh, I can't predict which level uh, they will reach. What is sure, though, is that they have a great pot potential and that they are part of the best players to have ever gone through IDV's academy. And now, and without having to wait longer, let's start with the first player, a, cen a central defender. His name is Piero Incapié, he's 19 years old and signed for Bayer Leverkusen last summer, where his coach Sewane plays him as at the left back position. I'd really like to to see him at Jonathan's place at, at the center because the German gave me the, the impression of being quite lost when, when it comes to marking opponents. And that doesn't mean, however, that Incapié doesn't perform a as a left back, because it's it is more the contrary. In fact, uh, a reason for this is his pace that allows him to, for example, to to carry the ball through several opponents. That's what what we're precisely going to see with uh, with the first video extract I I, I chose. Um, now is so in Capier is the number three. He's going to read. To receive the ball and he's a he'll yeah he's already starting to sprint forward get forward you know um exactly and now he could pass the ball to to the left to to purvis his two pinion the the left back but he sees there is space through the through these two colombian players and he's going to to get through it, okay? So that that is really a, a good decision he made here. He took here, and that means this Colombian player is forced to to get onto in, and that's where he's going to commit a, a foul. I'm going to To show you again, yes. So that was it with the first sequence. And even though Incapi is very good uh, defensively um, in the air or to recover the ball, I don't want to show video extracts of these qualities since I don't want the video to, to last too long. Uh, what I do want to show though is the aspect in which he has to improve, in my opinion, the the anticipation. The, the, the anticipation of through runs um, so that's on the, first, uh, on the sec second sequence so where is in cap here he's here uh, he's marking so the, the Colombian player the, there and the Colombian player he's marking he's going to to make a superb, um, a superb run, he's first going to to act like like if he wanted the ball here, and directly after he's going to to get deep forward. So, and the thing is, Pinkapie abused a, a little bit of his physical ab ability since he he went he went in, in his direction forward uh, with full with full pace and uh, and that's that's in that's not what he what he should have done because he will then have to I mean, let I'll show you he'll then have to to slow down that's happening now he will he'll, he'll then have to slow down to 
turn himself, but the Colombian player is way, way meters away from, from him. So two possible solutions that he could, that would have helped him is to, to make a, a smaller steps. Like these are too big. He can't change direction so so quickly when 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 he's so the the pace is a problem, but the size of his steps is another, and he could he could uh, position himself uh, a little bit uh, on the side here so that he he doesn't have to to turn himself completely. He doesn't have to do a U turn. He can just go in this way laterally and get in the other way back. He doesn't. He he wouldn't lose lose on time so much here when if he if he would if he if he would position him himself like this. So that was it for this second sequence. He had here only one player to mark but that's a bit uh, the second sequence is is, in, is precisely more complex since Leo Messi drops back in Capier is here Messi is there and Di Maria is going to to get into the space here uh, forward and that and, and Inca is, is is just going to to commit the same mistake. Uh, if you're going to see this. Yes. So now he he finds out that he's he's committed a, uh, a mistake and he's going to to turn himself and get back in the into the other way around, but. That that will be too late. Um, that you should. That you see. Yes. Team Maria is is again as meter meters away from him. But I'm quite optimistic though because I think I do think that if it puts the two solutions I mentioned before into practice. This situation will stop being his, his weakness because he's actually very good at anticipating attacks generally. And if I'm so optimistic on this point, it's because he's shown several times that his ability to read the, the game is one of his strengths. His numerous precise passes through or behind the opponent's lines uh, speak for themselves, so for instance. That is why I had to to, to choose uh, to show you one a precise long ball to to the other side of the pitch. Uh, so Hincap is a player on the ball, and he's going to play it to this play. So that's that's really he's passed it to to this player, and I really liked the um, the risk he took here because he could have simply passed to this player. Uh, which is more risky, but the the team uh, which is less risky, but that that's precise. That's precisely what he he had to do because the team can can go forward uh, more easily by playing onto this player. So and this this self confidence in in his abilities. Can be appreciated in, in in another sequence of play as well, where he executes a, a so-called sombrero. What I appreciate here, though, is so here we have Incapian. We can see that he just turned his head to to see that the, the rival, the opponent, is is coming towards him, and this so-called scan. Will allow him to to then execute this so-called sombrero, um, 
and the whole thing uh, under pressure and pressure is precisely something that he can he can deal quite easily with since so we we've we've already seen that he can solution open and pressure pretty well um, carrying uh, carrying or passing the ball as we've seen but dribbling is also an option he he can choose that's what we are going to see here he receives the ball and he gets inside but what what I but we shouldn't miss out on another player's actuation here on this extract. Let's have a look at the number 20, 23's run um, behavior. How he's going to act. So the number 23 is here. And he's going first to first he's going to see that there is room, there is space here for him. And then it's getting into the space right now. But he turns his head to see that he's going to receive the ball. In cap people he's going to play a pass to him. He turns his head then to the right to see that this player is coming towards him. And that's not the last scan since he returns his head to the left to see that there is space here for his teammate uh, that, that will allow him to to play to play another pass. That's what you're going to see right now. And that was it. So who is this number 23? That's our next player, Moises Caicedo, uh, which surely is the, the most promising player that has gone through independent, Independiente del Valles Academy with Hinke Pie. The 21 years old is currently playing at Bulgian club Burshot on, on, loan, on loan from Brighton, the team he, he joined last winter. And I think that the last game extra convinced you uh, he had he has a great ability to read the game. That is why you won't be surprised to, to know he uses it both uh, to both receive and play passes through or between the lines. And what I really like about his passes is that in addition to being precise, they're really driven, but not too hard or, or too fast either. And this above all when playing onto the other side. And this is a detail you don't want to, to underrate since the ball arrives earlier, meaning more space and time for the receiver before an opponent shows up. The thing is, it was too difficult to, to choose only one uh, of his passes. This is why I can only encourage you to, to watch one of his matches or some of his highlights at, at least. And another quality that is linked to his excellent reading of the game is his ability to, to press the opponent at the right time. You can precis precisely see that he's quite... Um, so here is Moses Caicedo. The player is going to, to put pressure on. And we can pre precisely see that he's quite away from his opponent at the moment of the pass. And the, the opponent can't therefore feel that he's being chased, so that, that is a really um, that is quite good that that he's not too too close from, from his opponent. The thing is, if you're not too close from your opponent, you then have to to sprint towards him when he's going to be to receive the ball, and that's precisely what Kaysedo is going to to do. Uh, I'll let you. I let you see. So when the ball arrives, Caicedo is on the player, and he rec he then recovers the ball quite easily. But the thing is, um, you could you could say well another opponent would 
which is more um, which has this this a bit to to scan to to turn his head would have wouldn't have lose the ball but I I wouldn't agree on that because I wouldn't agree on that because he he arrived so quickly the player couldn't have done more anyway and then he plays very well with his body recovers the ball for for his team uh, he generally he generally generally recovers a lot of balls not only in these kind in these kinds of press, pressing situations but also in more dangerous situation where he has to run back towards his own goal this shows that one doesn't need to be a mountain of muscles in in order to be good defensively. Also, does well in individual battles, by the way. And better said, I've not found any weakness in him. He really, he's a complete player. That is why I, I also have to mention uh, his offensive qualities as well. Instead of having chosen one of his numerous strong and precise shots, I, I decided to pick one of his offensive runs. Um, so here is Moses Caicedo, and just before the the ball arrives to to this player on the side, we see that Caicedo turns his head forward to yeah to just to. To scan what's what's going on on the pitch, and he, I think that he he find out there there is a possibility to have a a two v one situation since uh, Yeremina marks marks this player, so he could there are two possible ways to to have this two v one situation. Or he goes in into this direction, or into this direction. The thing is, there's already a, a Colombian player uh, that that could mark him. Also, he's free. He could mark him uh, if Caicedo went on this direction. And the other, on the other side, as there's also a, a Colombian player. But this player makes is making a mistake that that a lot of defenders uh, make is that they only they are only focused on the ball and that will allow uh, that will allow Caicedo to to run on his uh, yeah to to get behind him you're going to see look at the defender he doesn't turn his head to see what's happened. So he he turns his head, but he can't see that Caicedo gets in. Yes, so that was it. Um, we then have a third player. His name is Gonzalo Plata. Um, so he's 21 years old. He's a Sporting Portugal uh, player on, on low natural Valladolid. And I have to admit that I would struggle if I had to predict which level he could reach one day, since his strengths are his speed and his dribbling. Um, although he already has, um, although he has already played as a as a left winger, I wouldn't play him in this position because he. He doesn't make as much differences as, as when he's lined up on, on the other side. From from the right wing, he can precisely cut inside uh, with his magical left foot, and then he can create danger through through passes or, or other skills. Now, I've selected one action of this kind, um, which also shows you the doubts one can have on, on, his, on his potential. So here is Gonzalo Plata. This player just received the ball, and 
and Gonzalo Plata is going to. Oh, sorry, I have to to clear it out. And Gonzalo Plata is going to turn his head to the left, and that is that is precisely good to 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 make the so that the opponent falls in, into his trap because this opponent will think hmm Gonzalo Plata is going to to go to this side to turn himself on this side or he's going to to play a pass uh, to this opponent and that will allow Gonzalo Plata to to reorientate himself that's wonderful and he's now a lot of space uh, in front of him, so he's going to to go forward. Nice dribbling, and that's 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 where he he didn't make the the good choice for me. He's not going to make the good choice for me. He should he should play it, um, he should he should play a pass to to this player. But instead, he he's going to to get in this to go in this direction and and to shoot with with his right foot with, without uh, having a lot of a huge shot angle, and that would have been better to to play on this side since there's the possibility to to have a, a two v one. He could also have cut inside and shoot with his left foot, but that's more complicated. So I would rather have First is the ball to this player. Let you see. Yeah. Bad decision for me. So we then have a last player. Uh, Alan Franco, 21 uh, 23 year, years old. Uh, Atletico Mineiro player on, on loan at Charlotte FC, um, coached by Miguel, Miguel Angel Ramirez, we, which one he already was at Independiente del Valle. Although he can play in all midfield positions, I'd rather have him on a quite advanced one, despite his good body orientations that allow him to, to keep the ball. He's not good in the air. Uh, even though he recovers a lot of balls otherwise, uh, thank, thanks to his aggressiveness. But it's not the quality I'm, I'm going to show you with this video extract, since, um, since, in fact, um, in fact, what's really going to, to stand out is the speed of his decision making without having to turn the head a lot, if any. Uh, so he's peeling for the ball. He wants the ball. Here, uh, there's a there's a lot of space, in fact. So, and he wants the ball. He asks for the ball. He's asking for the ball. Turns his head once, and he's now in two touches. Is going to create danger. A good body orientation. He turned himself, and he's going to to play a through pass here to this for this player. And that's quite uh, that's quite surprising since he's kind of uh, the ball receiver is is quite. Uh, Hidden here in behind, and you will see that this player thinks, "Oh, he's going to play here," but no, he's going to play to. So there are two players there, and he's going to play in behind. I'll let you see. Yes, perfect, and that's really that was really quick. Like he receives the ball and turns himself. Directly and two touches. So 
He also contributes uh, offensively with his forward runs. He, in, he indeed often projects himself, himself when when there are crosses, but there are more chances you you would see him get into the half spaces so so that he can put in a cross put in a cross himself. That is what um, you will see on the on the following video extracts. So here, in the, he gets into the half space. And puts in a cross, and that's this extract is even better because a lot of players. So here is Alan Franco. A lot of players who have asked for the ball here or here or here, but he gets forward into the into this half space and. He'll then have not a lot of time to to give the ball because the, the goalkeeper is already coming towards him. But instead of shooting, um, he prefers to directly place them to the side, and that's that's that hap all that happened really fast. Uh, he's good. At, uh, he's got a very good peripheral uh, vision. One touch, so that uh, that's really impressive. So to conclude with Alan Franco's offensive contribution, you also have to know that he is a key player for his team when when playing in low blocks that that don't let him a lot of space, since it is very hard to take the ball off him because of his ability to reorientate himself very quickly with the ball. And that was it for this analysis of these four promising Ecuadorian players. It will be great to, to follow them one by one in their club and together with La Tri, La, La Tri Color. And in addition to them, Ecuador also has uh, other interesting players to, to follow if you want to, to watch one, one of the games. You can obviously find um, famous uh, Purvis Estupinion and, and Ener Valencia, but also other former Independiente del Valle players like Felix Torres, Jackson Mendes, Carlos Greso, and Michael Estrada, as well as former academy players like Angelo Preciado and Jose, Jose Hurtado, all like Pedro Vite and like and and say central defenders William Pacho and and Jackson Poroso, who all three de deserve a national team debut, in, in my opinion. But we should also keep an eye on uh, other young Ecuadorian players like Le Leonardo Campana and uh, Jordi Caicedo, but more, particle, more, more particularly on, on, young, on youngsters like Ter Jeremy Sormiento, Diego Almeida and Byron Castillo, I would say. But in this video, I only wanted to present you these four former IDV Academy players to, to stay in the continuity of my previous video and to show that, uh, that for a country like Ecuador that wasn't used to, to form so much players of this standard, it really is a huge success. Now, if you don't want to miss my next video, in which I will explain the role of different Red Bull football clubs through the history, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Twitter account. If you like this video, you can drop me a like, let me know it in the comment section and share this video. This would help me a lot. Thank you and bye bye.